Hey, hey YouTube, this is Stacy from Humorous Homemaking. I have a book review for you guys today. And I know I've been going over a lot of books and curriculum and stuff, but this is actually a book for mamas or the ladies. <laughs> this isn't a book about homeschool, okay? So today I want to review um, You're Not Enough and That's Okay by Allie Beth Stuckey. Just real quickly, let you know what I thought about it a few takeaways from the book because when I posted I actually didn't post I was reading it I just um, posted a few pictures on Instagram stories and this was in the photo when I was talking about morning time or quiet time and I had a few people be like oh my gosh when you're done will you please do a book review of course I will because I love video this book by Allie Beth Stuckey is um, a Christian perspective or um, conservative Christian perspective on the phrase you are enough and the culture that's going around of self-love and the really hard, strong emphasis on loving yourself, loving yourself, loving yourself, love yourself, um, above all other things. And so actually when I was reading through this book, a couple times I was like, I don't, I don't know if I like this book because a few things would like prick me. And I figured out by the time I was through the end of the book why I kept feeling those um, feelings of, I don't know if I like this book. And it was because I think <laughs> as, I, I call myself naive, but I'd say maybe naive is not the correct word, maybe more like sheltered, that I look at things differently. So I think the way that I see the world is different than a lot of the ways other people see the world because when I see the phrase, um, you are enough, I have a t-shirt that actually says that, to me, when I say that phrase or I hear that phrase, it's a reminder to me that God made Stacy the way that she is. And she doesn't have to try to be somebody else. She doesn't have to try to fit in with the Joneses. She doesn't have to try to be all these other people who um, are, I don't have to try to fit into a box. I am enough the way that God created me. But the way the toxic culture of self-love sees that phrase is, you are enough because and you don't need anything else you don't need anybody else you don't need anything else and if you preach self-love to yourself enough eventually you won't have the negative feelings or um, feel bad about yourself you won't keep trying to fill your life full of things that don't serve you um, once you get to that spot where you get to your self-love happy place and I've never looked at that phrase that way. So this was kind of an eye-opening read for me to go through the five myths um, that the culture is dealing with right now, which she says are, you are enough, you determine your truth, you're perfect the way you are, you're entitled to your dreams, and you can't love others until you love yourself. So I feel like I have been... I have said a few of these phrases and not actually thought about why I was saying them. So this book definitely kind of made me pull back and re-examine or think about the phrases that I say and make sure I'm saying them from the correct um, heart point or correct um, the correct reason or, or why I may say something like you are enough. Um, because the truth is, and the way she ends the book, I'll read it to you, is that it, we're not enough and that's okay. We don't have to be enough because our Jesus is enough. He's the only one who fills our, our God-shaped hole. We don't fill that God-shaped hole inside of our lives with self-love or self-affirmations or, you know, treating myself, uh, taking care of myself first, make sure I love myself and that I determine my truth and all these things. We can try as hard as we can to fill that empty void inside of us with all of these societal norms and that hole is still going to be there because the only person ever meant to fill it is Jesus. Um, she ends it with, while the thief, Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy in the name of self-love, Jesus came so we may have abundant life through him. His way leads to joy, to peace, to wisdom, to comfort, to steadiness, to purpose, to all the things you've been told to look for in yourself but have never been able to find. You're not enough. You'll never be enough. You never will. You would, uh, you've never been enough, and that's okay. That's okay because we don't have to be enough. Our Jesus is enough, and he's the one who comes in and fills that hole and that void in our life. And so when I say I am enough or you are enough, we are enough because of Jesus, and we can't fill that hole ourselves. My... Um, 
there were a few things that she says in here. So she talks about the Enneagram. And there were, like I said, I look at the world through different glasses. I feel like and a little bit of naive thoughts where um, she calls out the Enneagram and a few other things that I've actually never looked at it myself in the way that she portrays it in the book. Of course, the Enneagram or any personality type um, testing and all of that sort of thing can become an idol. It can be something that we serve instead of Jesus. It can be something that we put above scripture. Absolutely, we can do that with anything in our life, not just the Enneagram, but literally anything we can put in a higher place than it's meant to be. But the Enneagram was a big deal to me because when I did learn about it, <laughs> again, I'm telling you rose-colored glasses, um, I thought everybody was like me. Until I read this book, I didn't understand why certain people would be night owls or have a to-do list and not check everything off or not do it until it was exactly right and just be like, oh, pff, pff, I'll finish it later. I was like, I don't understand you people. What's wrong with you? Something's wrong with you. I, er, mm, back the bus up. You've got to finish before you go on to something else. And when I read that book and learned about how different people are wired in their brain, including my children, it opened my eyes to kind of allow me to love people just a little bit better where I finally realized, Stacy, not everybody is wired the same way as you. Artsy people like my daughter, Enneagram 4s, don't think the same way as somebody like me who is a one who aims toward perfectionism. And it allowed me to love them where they're at. And instead of always being in that spot where I felt a little bit almost judgmental because I didn't understand why people wouldn't do things the way that I did them. And it was because they're not wired that way. So the Enneagram was eye-opening for me as far as being able to love and serve people. But I can see how someone could easily take the Enneagram or any, like I said, any, any personality type test and make it um, holy and super scriptural and putting it above scripture and serving it and worshiping the Enneagram before the, they would um, look to scripture. But it, it was one of those things for me that helped me learn um, to see people through the uh, lens of Jesus, which the older I get, the more I realize how in my early years, oh, I was just so stupid and I didn't really know anything. I'm actually enjoying getting older because I'm learning so much. When I used to think when I was younger, I knew everything. And now I'm like, good gravy, you don't know anything. You're dumb as a stick. So I do recommend this book. It is written from a very matter of fact standpoint, which is the same way as me. Um, Cause I think I read in here, if I remember correctly, that she is also a perfectionist in Enneagram one. <laughs> so there's no fluff. There's no flowery, oh good lovely feelings and let's all hug and it's a this is the point these are the facts this is the scripture that's my kind of book if you need a little bit more flowery language read this and then with your teddy bear cuddled up on the couch and maybe a cup of hot cocoa <laughs> but it was a really good read i love ali beth stuckey i love her instagram page i love her podcast i really appreciate what she has to say especially in a world of craziness right now she comes at um, current events from a reformed conservative christian perspective which is very helpful for me um, as i try to wade through everything that goes on in the world in these days so that is my review of you're not enough and that's okay. The only person meant to fill our God-shaped hole is Jesus and I need more of him every day. So this was a very helpful read to me and I do recommend it. I think if you pick it up and read it, you'll also enjoy it.